Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Essence of Shay. This is very impromptu, but I just finished watching the Chris Brown uh Watch My Life. Let me the Chris Brown <laughs> Welcome to My Life documentary. And I wanted to discuss this while it was fresh on my mind. First reaction, wow. Like, wow. Um, sorry for the lighting and all this stuff, but this is very impromptu. I just turned on my ring light. I don't even have on my Canon. I have on like my Sony camera. Uh, that's good for like selfies, but I just wanted to turn it on real quick and just talk about um, Just the whole thing it start off as Any documentary kind of does start off the highs in a person's career is like um, In my eyes the Oreo cookie like you have the two outside layers which for some people are the best and you have the cream in the middle where you don't really care too much about it i mean you will partake in its deliciousness but it's still not good for you so you either swipe it off or you eat it i don't know where i was going with that cookie scenario but it is what it is. It already happened. I'm not going to edit this. I'm putting it right out like this. It is um, Friday, August 18th at around 9.28 at night. And I didn't even know this was out. But I kept seeing people, like, I was listening to The Breakfast Club and they were talking about him, like, blaming Rihanna for uh, what happened. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I got, what are y'all talking about? So, it's not free. You actually do have to pay something. So, I paid $4.99 on iTunes. Um, but you can get it on Amazon for like $3 or whatever. You just have to pay for it. Um, which is cool. It's whatever. Uh, but yeah, it starts off just talking about all his highs. How he got into the industry. And how he just, it basically was an overnight success. And... <laughs> this crazy story that I didn't know about that Usher basically spoke to him because L.A. Reid sent Usher to uh, speak to Chris Brown to, you know, get him to sign with L.A. Reid, basically. Um, I'm not quite sure if he did at the end. I think he signed with another label, but Usher basically was like, sign, feel, do what makes you happy, uh, what makes you feel good within. Like, don't do it because you feel like that's... Uh, the right choice to make but yeah and i just remember when chris Brown fr first came out with run it i was like yo who is this dude bro because homeboy could dance and whatnot and anybody who knows me knows i am a die hard michael jackson fan like in high school i used to wear the tape the white tape around my fingers i was up still am upset not was still am so it was nice to see like a person around my age bracket kind of emulating and doing the same stuff as uh michael jackson i mean we had usher but after a while you know people get tired of folks so it was nice to get a refreshing um kind of refreshing stance in the music uh the music community um he goes into uh, talking about um, how he met Rihanna and how um, she used to come, like anytime she'll see him perform, like he would get nervous and whatnot and how they just was going on and off for like a few months, but they never made it official. He talked about, sorry, my throat is dry. He talked about, um, him staying over by her house and with that night he was like yo what are we doing like quote like what are we doing you know you ever been in that situation with somebody like everything is vibing everything is cool but y'all ain't had that talk yet you know what i mean like y'all still technically just kicking it there's nothing there's no title or anything to it and until somebody 
speaks on it and Chris Brown spoke on it he asked her basically like what are we doing like I love you like I'm, re I'm ready for a relationship and she laughed at him which was completely the funniest thing ever because this is what we do when we feel like somebody is not ready for a relationship and we technically are ready for it uh and the person takes forever to like get their bearings together you laugh them off you like you don't take them serious like okay i've been one of this obviously you didn't and now all of a sudden you do like now nah, i don't take you seriously but push forward they they uh they became a relationship and boyfriend and girlfriend and whatnot and uh fast forward you guys know all the lovey-dovey and all that stuff but fast forward he spoke about um when they first started dating she asked him to be honest um and say a specific person that was in his camp did you mess with that lady and um he flat out told her no in the heat of the moment um I kind of understand to be honest because if you just started talking to somebody you don't know where you guys are going you don't know what they're really about you don't feel obliged to kind of throw that information out there I could be wrong but that's how I feel like me you just start kicking it like I don't need to share that with you if anytime because it really doesn't matter this was before me and you or for me and you even got to this level so I don't feel like let sleeping dogs lie kind of situation so he lied and he told her which I do not fault him for doing I could be wrong leave comments below what you guys think but anyways yeah so he told her no um uh nine months later into the relationship they were at the infamous Clyde Davis party and um before that he had really sat down and be like yo i really want to marry you and he had that serious conversation with her and he said but before we even get there i just want to clear the air um remember when you asked me like nine months ago when we first started kicking it if i had messed with this person well in all actuality i did i'm assuming rihanna probably got mad like yo why did you lie to me the, the basic conversation he probably just was like I'm just speculating. He probably just was like, you know, we just started. I didn't want to mess up anything, so I lied. I think that's the consensus answer, roughly, you know? So they go to the Clive Davis party, and I, but, but what I found very interesting, he said, is that once he told her the truth, all hope was gone, in a sense. Like, she didn't trust him anymore. Um, her trust for him had died because I, in her head, I asked you when I was, when I wanted the honesty and we could have just squashed this whole thing. I asked you, you lied. Now we're in a happy place and now you come to me with this bullshit. So now what am I supposed to do? Because now uh, I'm thinking in a woman's eye, now I'm in love with you. I see a future with you. I thought there was nothing going on. It was just me and you. And now you're telling me that that was not the case. It might be the case now, but that wasn't the case in the beginning. That's what I'm thinking happened will cause her to be pissed off. Because though I say I agree with him for, you know, um, lying in the beginning, like I understand him doing it, I do understand her side as well. You get what I'm saying? Is that I, I understand both sides. The crazy thing is, is that they went after this conversation, they go to the Clive Davis Grammy party. They're all fine. They put all that to the side. They're moving on. And shorty that they had this conversation about comes to the table and says, hey, like that sounds like a telenovela. Like, huh? What are you doing here? Like, why are we in the same? I would have been livid and Rihanna was. He said that she cried at the table and he was like, babe, please don't do this right now. I honestly did not know she was coming here. I don't, I like, I really don't talk to her like that. And Rihanna just was like, she didn't believe him and she sucked it up and 
because they're in front of their peers and everybody sucked it up and whatnot. And we know the story, how they got into the car and they got in the argument and whatnot. And he confirms that he actually indeed did hit her. Like this whole time, he never um, denied or validated um, that happening. And he actually did say, like, I placed, like, I punched, I punched her dead in her mouth. He said that he bit her after she had grabbed his balls that um how prior to this they were like in a basically verbally and physical abusive relationship both parties and he he says that it was wrong the thing that i enjoyed the most about this is that not once did he make any excuses and a lot of people are taking it as oh he says that rihanna did this to him rihanna did that to him is like he's deflecting i don't think he's deflecting i've been in a situation and many situations like that and it's not a deflection you're telling what it has happened you guys weren't there in that relationship you heard her side and now you're hearing his and i feel like it's very unfair for people to be like oh well he did this to her so he did that he's dead wrong he knows he's dead wrong that's no questions but he's telling you how this relationship was the good and the bad now you don't have to accept it, but that's his truth. He was in the relationship. So you get what I'm saying? He's not blaming her in any sense. He was just saying the relationship was a blessing and a curse in the same sense. Um, and he just talks about spiraling basically out of control, which we all saw. Like, we all saw after all of that had happened that he was the monster she was the victim everybody loved and adored rihanna but everybody turned their back on him so he kind of acted out he lashed out he didn't want to talk to anybody and um he had music and whatnot uh after all this situation and he goes on good morning america and he specifically tells them i guess because celebrities always talk about this like they specifically say what questions they want to be asked and what questions they don't want you to ask. And um, I, Robin Williams, I'm sorry if I say her name wrong, but I know her, I just, her last name, I'm probably butchering, but she just kept hammering into him about his past and about the situation that happened two years prior and he was trying to promote his new music and he said that he was feeling irate and he was feeling so upset like, lady like i didn't come here for that like we already discussed this like two for two years straight like i'm coming here to promote my music like i'm not even trying to even deal with that no more, like right now in this moment and like she tried, kept going and going and going and he just said he was just livid so after he left the stage he just flipped out and i remember watching that like yo chris no man like when they say he threw the chair at good morning america he actually said he was so pissed that it actually wasn't a chair it was his fist and i for one <laughs> i can understand that because when i'm mad like when i'm mad bruh <laughs> like i become the hultress you feel me so but once again, like he's exp he's telling his story as to what happened, and it seems like people are saying that he's just making excuse. Like there's some people who like appreciate him for being honest, and there's some people who are saying that he seems like this whole thing he's just making excuses and pointing fingers. You guys have to understand that people go through things, and them telling their side of the story is not pointing fingers. They're telling what they went through on their end. The mindset that they were in um me for instance i've been in abusive relationships i've been the one to verbally attack others and if i'm telling you my side of the story i'm telling you my side of the story but i'm also letting you know like how this happened like how this transpired like it didn't just come out of nowhere there there are things that lead up and i feel like if you ask me and i'm telling you don't respond by telling me that what I'm saying is an excuse. So I feel like the people need to just cut him a break for that part because he's actually just telling his truth. And he seems very humble and 
he seems very aware of the mistakes that he's made and him going to jail and he even admitted like he did before Instagram that he was in love with the two of them and how the demise of his relationship with Karushi was because his daughter was born and how the day before every, the day before she found the the day she found out he found out like a day or two prior or a day prior and um his lawyer had called him and told him yo this is about to be on TMZ and he's like no 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 I got to tell my girl first like I did not cheat on her like I need her to know but at that point anybody would be like I'm not going to be with you no more like what are you talking about? <laughs> like, we just went to Disney and now you have a kid? Like, what? Like, who knew? But yeah, all in all, this was a very good documentary. And thumbs up to Chris Brown. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. I feel like it will um, soften your heart to him if it hasn't, or if you haven't already. It will let you understand his side as well. Um... And yeah, and it seems like him and Rihanna have moved on from the situation, like not being together. But you know, they like each other's pictures and uh, comment on, on, on under each other's posts and stuff. And it seems like they've moved on. So why can't we? You know, um, violence is never uh, necessary. It should never be a resort. I came from two abusive relationships, so I completely get it and if you guys want me to talk about that i have no problem you guys know i'm an open book i'll talk about it because uh it mold me into a person i am good and bad and so the thing about it is is forgiving yourself at the end of the day you do the things that are necessary to somebody sex me you do the things that are necessary to fix what you have broken um you repair the damage uh you can continue. You can continue ask people for apologies, um, but and com complete. I mean, completely. You can continue to keep telling people sorry, but at the end of the day, you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself and just make yourself a better person. And I feel like he's human. Things happen. His thing actually happened in the big in front of everybody. And now that he has his daughter, it's making him grow up and face his demons. And, you know, he has his little things from here or there. But all in all, he's still human at the end of the day. So I truly appreciate this documentary. Um, like I said, if you guys haven't watched it, go watch it. Uh, I thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's super impromptu and super weird and all over the place. But I, I like this. I liked, I, I liked what I watched, and I think you guys would like it too. If you did, uh, leave comments below. Tell me what you guys think about the whole Chris Brown situation from beginning to now. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll see you guys Thursday. See you later, Tiger Lilies. Toodles.